dead dog. I'm nothing but a dead dog. But it's not because of me. It's because of Jesus. It's all because of Jesus. That's why God shows us mercy. It's all because of Jesus. That's why God seeks us out. It's all because of Jesus. That's why there's such grace available for such a dead dog as me. Oh, glory to God. This is the worship of the church. That we should stand in the presence of the king and hear him say, I will do for you according to Jesus' sake and give you all the lands of your fathers. And you will eat bread at my table continually. All that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is above and beyond anything that we could ever ask or think that the Father God would do that for us. And this is a beautiful picture of it right here in 2 Samuel chapter 9. What did Mephibosheth have in Lodabar? Nothing. What could he ever have had in Lodabar? Nothing. And then suddenly the king, according to the covenant that Mephibosheth knew nothing about, gives him all that was Saul's. Then the king looked at Ziba. Ziba standing there off to the side there in verse 9. The king called to Ziba, Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master, son, all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. You see, Ziba now is going to do something for this young man that he can't do for himself. So the Spirit of God for us does something for us that we can't do for ourselves. He provides for us. All that living water that comes to us, all the teaching that the Spirit of God gives to us, all the inspiration and edification, all the unction, all the power, all the ability to stand in God's presence, the ability to go to Him in prayer, all of that, ladies and gentlemen, is the work of the Spirit of God in us because we could do none of that for ourselves. And so Ziba comes before the king, and the king says, He's now your master. This is your master's son, and I've given him everything pertained to Saul. So now guess what? You work for him. Once the land was in his possession... He couldn't do anything about it, so he has to have Ziba to take care of it. Someone else had to do the work to provide for him. So Ziba, again, represents the Spirit of God, teaching us, giving us all that the Father has. Thou, therefore, and thy sons, David says to Ziba, and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. Then notice the last thing he says, but Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread alway at my table. So Ziba and his sons are tilling the land, keeping it productive, making it useful, producing a harvest, storing the goods. But Mephibosheth, he's at David's house. So he has plenty. He has produce. He has income. He has lands and property, servants. He has all of that now. He goes from absolutely nothing in Makir's house to the master of a great house in Israel. And David says, but he's going to eat bread at my table. Notice this. Again, we see this beautiful picture of adoption here. Eating at the king's table is mentioned a total of four times in this passage. Four times. David says it four times. It's that important. So we have adoption here. And notice the very last time it says, As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And so we, when we are adopted by this wonderful king, the God of heaven, he takes us as one of his sons and we sit at his table and eat. And he restores to us all that the canker worm has eaten over the many years. Verse 12 says, Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. Isn't that beautiful? It, in, the, in the Hebrew, it's, uh, it's Mephibosheth had a little boy. <laughs> Who knows how little he was, but he must have been a lad. And can you imagine the miracle that this little boy saw? He saw his daddy go from a cripple that had nothing to a man seated at the king's table who had property and ability. He saw all of that. Can't you imagine how that changed the future for little Micah? When he saw mercy extended to his dad, and his dad received that mercy from the king, 
I, 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 I wish there was a story to tell us what happened to little Micah. He had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Zeba were servants to Mephibosheth. So, verse 13 ends our story. Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. Where had he been? He'd been in Lodabar. He's not there now. He's in the city of peace now. He's not in the city of nothing. He did eat continually at the king's table. Why? Because he's now a son of the king. And he was lame on both his feet. That condition continued. But it didn't change the fact that David showed him mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, we oftentimes focus too much on our inabilities. We often focus too much, uh, too often on our handicaps or what we consider to be our handicaps. We focus too often on what is wrong and we don't say God can, we say we can't. And yeah, you're right, you can't. But he's not limited by it. And he will do with you just what he did with this young man. Take him from nothing to something. He will take you from nothing to something. Because of the grace of God that he shows to us on behalf of the Lord Jesus. So there's a position change. No longer in Lodabar. No longer hiding. No longer scared. No longer destitute. No longer depending on the goodness of a good man. He's now in Jerusalem, the capital of the country, living there and eating every day with the king of that country. What a marvelous, marvelous change. And it's all because of grace. Jesus will meet you. Thanks for listening to this week's message. Please join us again next time for another installment of the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit.